Join the Macy's Aventura Home Store and Chat Chow TV for the Play Taste Shop third Thursday cooking series. Up next is Chef Daniel Surfer from Blue Collar on November 21st at 7 p.m. Visit Macy's.com slash events for more details. Located in the heart of downtown Miami's Brickell neighborhood, Box Park showcases a menu exploding with unexpected and unique Florida-centric dishes. The cozy and coolly sophisticated joint is Miami's first SPE certified restaurant. And today we sit down with executive chef, Matt Hinckley. Matt, what are we drinking today? I'm drinking a Moscato Mojito with passion fruit and you're drinking the Crazy Martinez. I always get the lovely pinky girly drinks with the lychee. So cheers. Cheers. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. No. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Now, the goal of the episode is to finish your drink by the end. <laughs> Barely okay. anybody does that with me. <laughs> <laughs> now, you worked with uh, Michael Schwartz for a little bit. How was that experience? Uh, I, I had a good experience working for Michael. Uh, I learned a lot in the kitchen. I think that uh, he's very talented uh, in the field, and uh, you know, it's, it's probably the, one of the tightest crews that uh, I ever had a privilege of uh, being around. And you've done some extensive traveling. So how has that affected the concept here at Box Park? Certainly with regard to a lot of the ingredients uh, and a lot of the, um, the cooking technique that we use, uh, it's a little bit unorthodox in some of the, some of the dishes. But I, in every kitchen and every place that I've traveled, um, I, there's always something that I, I would embrace and take with me and there was always things that I would kind of leave behind and um, those experiences is what's helped you know, put this menu together. And, Okay, great. So I want to, just like a regular meal would start, I kind of want to start with the bread service because your bread service is not traditional bread and butter. Talk about that for a little bit. You no, know, we make uh, several different breads in-house daily. Crystal's Bakery um, does, we do an Alaskan sourdough uh, every day that uh, started in the open air of Alaska, the mother culture, and we've kept it alive for about a year and a half now. Uh, we do baguettes, we do uh, a, a couple different flavored breads depending on what's around in season and um, rather than serve it with traditional butter, uh, I, I ran into this dukkah in, um, in East Africa which is a condiment on a lot of different tables and they take the, the bread, they dip it in the olive oil and then dunk it into the dukkah which is a, a, a mix of different uh, spices and nuts and I thought it was a much more nutritional um, approach than, than smearing it with with butter, butter. And, and <laughs> now your menu offers a, a wonderland of flavor so let's talk about some of the dishes that maybe you're most proud of I mean you've gotten a lot of press over the alligator but what are some of the ones you're most proud of I like the alligator dish because I, I think <laughs> it's um, it's taking something that's not very familiar to a lot of people but I think it's very approachable in my lifetime, the, the alligator was an endangered species, and now they've, they've, they're thriving so much that, that we're able to put them on a menu. And, but on the contrary, the daddle pepper um, is an endangered species, and the sauce that we serve with it, with a plant, it's, it's entirely different. And by putting daddle peppers on the menu, it's helping to preserve the species because it encourages farmers to grow more of it. Okay, and what is this alligator dish? Because we keep referring to this alligator dish. It's, uh, it's <laughs> an alligator, that they call it tenderloin, what we call it tenderloin. It's mostly the tail meat and a little bit of rib uh, that's tenderized and we marinate it in uh, a buttermilk and um, a house hot sauce that we make and then dredge it in flour and spices and fry it. Uh, and then we serve it with this uh, daddle pepper sauce. So it's a very simple, approachable dish. You think if you, you know, if you like popcorn chicken, you're probably gonna like uh, fried alligator. alligator. It sounds a little chicken. bit. It sounds a little bit threatening on the menu, but it's actually a very approachable dish. Well, you encourage people to try some of the rare proteins. I mean, what are some of the other? You've got some interesting proteins um, on the menu. Yeah, we. I, I use a, a lot of different stuff, um, and there's. A, I think there's a lot of different reasons uh, behind that. Um, from uh, like a socio-political um, point of view. I'm, I, I only want to serve animals that I know are well taken care of. I'll only put animals on the menu that I know lived um, a life that, that, is, uh, that shows respect to the animal and the environment. So a lot of the choices that I have are, are based on that sort of ethos. And um, I like to serve things that are a little bit out of the box, but I like to serve them in, in very familiar ways. Like you'll get wild boar in our gumbo, or you'll get you know frog or alligator sometimes in the gumbo. But you you know you're going to order it because you like gumbo. And if I didn't tell you it was wild boar, you would probably assume that it's pork. 
Okay. Yeah. And what are some of the other dishes? Because we, we've got the alligator, the gumbo. Um, I'm, I don't have chicken uh, anywhere on the menu. I get a lot of people <laughs> to ask about it. Um, so we'll do guinea hens, we'll do pheasant, we have duck on the menu. Sometimes we'll do goose and uh, the charcuterie. Um, so I, I think it's 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 a little bit more interesting to me. You know, instead of fried chicken and waffles, I might do fried quail and waffles. And right. it's, if you like fried chicken and waffles, you're, you're gonna, gonna like, like this. fried quail and waffles. <laughs> and aside from, because we're talking about a lot of meats, a lot of protein, you guys have um, a really well thought out vegetarian and vegan option. So Absolutely. talk about some of those. Yeah, I think that when we, um, we're penciling this menu out. One of the things that we really wanted to uh, pay attention to was the vegan and vegetarian diet because in most cases it's an afterthought. So I really wanted to pay a lot of uh, attention to the offerings and we put a lot of effort into putting together composed vegetarian and vegan dishes because it's you know it's it's important that you know that people that choose that lifestyle are, are catered to as well. I agree. What are some of those dishes? I mean. It Probably one of my favorite is the ancient grain salad. Yeah, the, the ancient grain salad gets um, quite a lot of press. That's one of my favorite dishes for sure. It's loaded in superfoods. It's all natural. Um, it's a healthful thing to eat, and it's a salad that you can eat and and feel satiated. It doesn't weigh you down, exactly. um, but you're not going to be hungry a half an hour after you eat it either. Right, and which perfectly segued me into, um, you guys are SPE certified. We've got yes. to talk about that because not everybody knows what that is. Explain what SPE sort of the SPE certification. The, the SPE certification, I use it like a consultancy. Um, if I put together a dish, um, we'll weigh, weigh all the ingredients down to the gram and then I'll submit uh, the recipe to uh, SPE's board of um, dietitians and, and they'll analyze the dish. Um, there's certain foods that they'll uh, pair up together that um, by themselves might not be uh, as beneficial. I wanted to ask you this, which is funny. So for the really adventurous foodie, you guys have a tasting menu and you have a really unique name for it. What's the tasting? No, they just send food. Just awesome. send food. Yeah. <laughs> this was born out of a restaurant that uh, Crystal and I went to in Atlanta, uh, Holman and Finch, where um, we, we were we were looking over the menu and the server came by and he's like, you know, you, you guys are, you know, you're into food or, you know, do you have any allergies? And we're like, no, we can pretty much eat everything. And he just took the menus away from us. He's like, I'll take care of it then. And he just started sending us food. I thought that was a really cool approach to, um, to dining. And I wanted to incorporate that experience into the menu here. So I'll bring in some stuff that you might not see on the menu. Ah. Um, that that I'll reserve for the people that want to come in and eat that way, and I'll have some, you know, have tricks up our sleeve for for people that want. The way to go. It's just in food. And let's end on dessert. For those that have a sweet tooth, what do you guys offer? Uh, we offer a, a, a quite a bit of different choices, and and Crystal I think has done a really good job of, of matching the way that we work in the in the savory part of the menu and, and offering all different kinds of. Uh, food for all different sorts of lifestyles and she's put a tremendous amount of effort and dedication into creating recipes that are uh, gluten-free or vegan um, or recipes that are heart healthy uh, which is it's difficult to do in that line of work so the banana split with the imperial stout does uh, pretty well goes a long way to say that she does everything completely from scratch um, with all uh, whole ingredients. I'm glad I asked. Well, cheers. Thank you cheers. so much. Thank you. Now you got to chug. <laughs> no, no, no.